What's up guys, it's Josh from Keep It Techie and today I want to do a quick video showing you guys how to create a bootable USB in the Linux terminal. Now, I always do videos where I review distributions and all that good stuff, but I never go through the process of actually creating a live USB or a bootable USB that you could use to actually install the operating system on your physical machine. So I wanted to kind of go through that, show you the command that I actually use. That way you can create the bootable USB and boot up into the system and actually install Linux if this is your first time actually touching it. So let's get started. Okay, so just so you know, this video will be like super short. So I wanted to take a little time to show you guys my system. I always uh, get questions in the comment boxes uh, like, what are the specs of your laptop or what's the specs of your computer, you know, and all that good stuff and what distribution you have installed so i just wanted to show you guys and the reason what made me want to do this video was really because i just reinstalled the distribution on my uh laptop i actually had manjaro uh for a while and i just quickly installed manjaro because it was quick to get my system up and running and i didn't have to figure out uh certain things on this new laptop in order to get Orch installed so i just went on and installed manjaro but i took some time that's why it took me a while to put out a video but i took some time i got me a new hard drive uh installed that uh, i got a two terabyte uh for my home directory and went it on and went through the process of installing Orch linux onto my laptop and got it set up to the way it was on my old laptop but anyway just to show you guys uh i'm using Orch linux uh I basically got a gaming laptop as you can see it's a uh, tough gaming uh and that's the model number if you guys want to check it out or whatever and then also these are the themes where well, the desktop environment uh you guys know i love xfce which is desktop environment i, I installed uh window manager uh here's the theme here's the icon the terminal you know all that good stuff and just to show you the processor i got an amd ryzen 7 4800h with uh radiant graphics uh it's got 16 you know threads or 16 cores uh at 2.9 gigahertz uh and the gpu is nvidia geforce rx uh 2060 uh it's a mobile gpu and i got 32 gigs of, of memory in the system so i upgraded the memory this system comes with i believe 16 like two eight eight gig sticks uh, i went on got two 16 gig sticks to make 32 but anyway this will kind of be like a review of what i've already showed you guys i did a video on the dd command and so that's what i typically use to create my isos and i use it you know recently to actually create the iso that i needed to install orange linux so i could log into it but you can follow this process if you're installing Kali Linux, if you're installing, you know, any any type of Linux distribution that you want to install. You can follow this process if you already have a Linux system up and running or if you logged into one live CD, but you have another USB plugged in and you want to write a ISO to, you know, the other USB drive. then you can use this command as well. It's built in to all Linux operating systems. It's the DD command. And so the first thing you want to do is actually find out what the drive name is and what the command I like to use is LS block. So it's LS BLK. Press enter and that'll give us all the drives that are connected to my system. As you can see, this is the one that I'm actually looking for. So 14 gigabyte or 15 uh, gigabyte uh, flash drive that I have installed. And also I already have a whole bunch of ISOs downloaded to my system. So I'll just use one of those to install onto the USB or create the live USB. Now, let me walk you through the DD command right fast and and the first thing I like to do is always, like I said, verify what the drive is. I already know it's a 15 gigabyte hard drive. You want to make sure you're specifying the right device. 
otherwise you can wipe out your system let's say you put in sda well that's my home directory and it's going the dd command will just do what you say you know what i'm saying so you got to make sure you selecting or typing in the right device and so now that we know what it is let's go down and type in the command i'm gonna show you the command right fast uh let me clear just to make you know just to clear out the uh, system and actually let me run that ls block again and that way we can have a reference uh, but uh you have to run dds sudo or root so you have to since i'm in my regular account i'm gonna use sudo so sudo dd and then basically you can specify the block size this is something that i typically do uh i, I specify the block size using it's basically an argument that you can use for the dd command but it's block size and i always do four megabytes which is fine and then after that you can specify the actual iso that you downloaded from the web so i already know where one is so let's just go if you have to type if and then equals and then the location of the iso so i already know what mine is it's basically home uh josh uh, documents and then operating systems and then linux and then let's just do a arch and let's see which ones are there i can't remember uh let's try to get the latest one so eight all right cool so that iso and then what iso i mean where we want to write this iso and if you remember that other the other video that i did you know you want to make sure you specify the right device so let's go uh uh of and it's kind of weird the way they put it so if and then of so if is what you're trying to write and then of is where you're trying to write it to so Let's go on and specify, like I said, the SDB device. So that's dev and then SDB. And that's pretty much it. So let's go down and run a command. And it shouldn't take too long. It shouldn't take too long, but we'll sit here and wait for it to finish. Um, with Arch, is a very small ISO because it's nothing but the Linux operating system. It's no desktop environment. It's nothing on the actual uh, ISO other than the operating system, the base, you know, operating system. So that's why they're able to have their ISO kind of small, you know, because if you download, let's say you, you download Manjaro or you want to install Manjaro, depending on what desktop environment, it could be like 2.2 gigabytes, you know, the size of the ISO. But Orch is always around six to seven hundred uh, megabytes. I remember at one point when I first played around with Orch, it was like five hundred megabytes, because you basically downloading everything from the web well to make the system look how you want to. But the base operating system or the base of Orch is on in the ISO. So, and just to explain a little bit about it, the ISO is basically partitioned and everything. Um, so when you actually write an ISO to make a, a live USB, it actually partitions the drive. So you'll see once this completes, it'll have like multiple partitions on it. Um, that is the Arch operating system. So it may have like the boot, the boot partition and then the root partition. It partitions the drive up so you can actually boot the system. You know what I'm saying? Like your boot directory, you know, or pop up. And that's what allows, you know, the USB to actually boot up when you actually turn on the system. So just wanted to explain that to you. But all right, cool. So that completed. And it took, uh, it gives you a little feedback or whatever. Uh, it basically tells you how much it wrote. Um, it says records in, records out, and then the actual size of the ISO or the actual files that were copied over uh, and it's 2.4 megabytes per second 290 seconds or whatever so that kind of lets you know how long it took but um one thing i forgot to show you guys is another thing i always kind of add especially when it's like a big iso uh and actually let me make sure this thing is unmounted uh and first let me show you what the actual drive looks like now that it's written and as you can see, it has two partitions. 
uh, and I'm assuming this is the boot partition um, that the ISO will use to boot up the operating system. And the rest of it is the general, uh, the other partition is the general Linux files. Now, I forgot to say something before I did this. Uh, one thing you wanna always make sure that before you run a DD command, you wanna make sure that the partitions are unmounted or they're not mounted to the system. Uh, Cause that can kind of mess it up if if you do if you do that if you write while the partitions are mounted to the system. Okay, so that's pretty much all I want to show you guys in this video. Uh, hopefully, this helps you out if you're trying to actually write an ISO uh, within the Linux operating system to a USB drive in order to make a bootable USB drive so you can actually install a distribution of Linux. So. Hopefully this helps somebody. If you have any questions, leave comments down in the comment boxes below. And of course, keep it techy.